things theology, all things theology We chop it up properly, without an apology Gotta give doxology to God hollow Because this is how we do it at all things theology Like I said, so appreciate you for uh, joining me. Uh, why don't you tell the people who you are? So I'm Emily. At 15, 15 to 17 years old, I socially transitioned into a boy. And my peers supported it. It stopped me from getting bullied. It made me protected. And then by the time I graduated, I already started to detransition a bit. But I was deep into the trans community and looking back on it now, it's completely horrifying what they're doing to these kids. Yeah. So why don't, so since you brought that up, why don't you tell us like some of the things that you personally went through? I, I understand every detransitioner's experience may be a little bit different, yeah. but why don't you tell us some of the things that you went through that now you see as horrifying, but at the time you probably were like, this is great. I, I really want to transition. Well, they told me that the thing I find most terrific in my case is that they told me that because my parents weren't letting me get testosterone, that meant my parents wanted me dead. They made wow. me hate my own parents. My parents are amazing, by yeah. the way. <laughs> I love my parents. They're amazing. And I just, I had so much hatred for them after getting into the trans community. Mm. And I truly believe my parents wanted me dead, but all wow. they wanted was what was best for me. So so for you, um, you were kind of being manipulated. Maybe that's too strong of a yeah. word. You, okay, so manipulated to believe that those who disagree, especially, especially your parents, yeah. were out to see you dead. Yeah. Wow. That's a... And that's something I still get, I get told that a lot on Twitter. Hmm. I'll say that children shouldn't be on hormones, children shouldn't be getting surgeries, and people will comment, they'll hmm. even private message me and tell me, oh, you just want all of us to die. And I'm like, yeah. no, I just don't think children should be getting lifelong consequences from a phase. Yeah. And do you- Most, go ahead. most children will outgrow the um, gender dysphoria. Hmm. So at what age were you, these feelings coming about for you personally? Well, I've always been a tomboy. Mm -hmm. And then probably around 14 or 15, I saw some trans stuff and I was like, maybe I'm trans because I don't really like girly things. So mm -hmm. I, I can't be a girl anymore, you know? And I noticed trans people were just, no one bullied them anymore. Mm. There was a couple other trans people in my school. No one really bullied them anymore. And I was bullied horribly. Mm. Like people would tell me to go cut myself and go kill myself all the time. But after I became trans, no one did that anymore. I was protected because if, any, if anyone spoke bad about me, they would be called transphobic and cast it out. Yeah. No, nobody wants to be called transphobic, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, I remember someone uh, saying about specifically trans, it's like, not only do they have rights, but it's like Uber rights. Like, yeah, they got more rights than anybody. <laughs> yeah, uh, a trans woman can attack someone, and someone will attack them back, and the person who defended themselves will get called transphobic. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, so you didn't get any surgery, right? Correct. I did uh, not get any surgery related to my transness. Right. So what was what was the reason for that, like, that you didn't get surgery? My parents didn't let me. Mm. And the one, the main reason I've been beginning to speak out recently is because they're starting to do surgeries without parental permission. There's people like online, like Eli Ehrlich, who is giving hormones to children without their parents' permission. Mm -hmm. And that is horrifying. Your parents your parents will always know you better than some stranger online sending right. you hormones. Your parents will usually know if it's a phase or not. And nine times out of 10, it's a phase. Right. What, what was your... shouldn't be giving these hormones and surgeries. Absolutely. Absolutely not. Uh, what was your parents, uh, I guess, reaction when you told them or when they found out? 
they were pretty that they I wouldn't say unhappy. They were displeased about it. And my mom's main reaction was just telling me this isn't you. I know this isn't you. Girls, girls are allowed to be tomboys. That doesn't mean you need to transition. Right. And she, they, they let me socially transition a bit, but at home they still called me Emily. I didn't wear my binder at home, and but at school and elsewhere I was Jacob, and I wore my binder, hmm. the whole nine yards, just without hormones or surgeries because I wasn't able to get on those without my parents' permission. I did seek hormones other ways, but thankfully back then no one was giving hormones to children willy nilly. You're right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it seems like your your parents were very involved in your life. Uh, do you think like people who don't have that support system or, or is it more easier for them to transition? Probably. Yeah. I don't I don't have experience in that, so I'm not sure. Okay. I think one of the biggest issues with children tra transitioning nowadays is that parents get called transphobic if they don't let their child transition. Hmm. They get shamed into letting their child transition and they don't know the true horrors within it. I know I keep saying the word horrors, but that that's what it is. Yeah. Um, they parents are tricked into thinking this is great for their child. They don't realize it's irreversible. Mm -hmm. One of the big things going around and I was in the trans community is saying that Hormones and puberty blockers are 100% reversible. They're not. I've even been told in some of my replies to my tweets that it's all reversible. It is not. It's, it's just insane how many parents think this is reversible. And I think that's the real issue is parents not completely understanding what's going on. Yeah. It seems to be, too, I mean, just kind of that issue you just brought up about it being reversible, that there's a lot of misinformation even about yes. if you trans. Uh, would you agree with that? I 100% agree with that. Okay. Yeah. Um, one thing I've been doing, I've been I've, I've listened to a lot of detransition stories. I listened to your interview. Um, hmm. One thing that seems to be a common thread is this issue of not having uh, or being alone. Or maybe yes. maybe even having some, um, I don't want to say disabilities, but just personal traits that maybe cause, obviously it's not the reason for them being bullied, yeah. but they were bullied. Uh, would you like to yeah. speak to that issue? I agree with that. It, the trans community targets vulnerable people who are alone. Hmm. They People who have never had a community are suddenly given this community and they're going to do what they can to stay in the community. That's what is so scary about detransitioning. Mm. You just, you finally have friends for the first time in your life. People stop bullying you for mm. the first time in who knows how long. So it's by leaving that protection, it's, you think that it's leaving your happiness when in reality, it's stopping you from being happy. Wow. You know, so that's that's kind of one of the issues I've been kind of very into this and being passionate about this. It's almost like one way we can prevent some of this is actually yeah. being there for people, you know, yeah. uh, not isolating people, uh, providing a community for especially children. Yeah. Right? Um, especially the, autistic women. Yeah. The number of autistic women right now, or I guess girls, autistic girls right now are just being trans so quickly because we don't follow the social norms. We're usually tomboys and we're usually outcasts as well. So by giving us a community, it makes us not feel like an outcast anymore. Yeah. When, when do you first remember struggling about like your, your identity and you can be as personable as, or not as personal as you like, uh, was there something that was like very young to where, you, you remember like, wow, like I, cause I, I, it seems like that's a common thread as well. Like there seems to be like a moment for, for hmm. people who transition that like they started yeah. to hate their body or their, you know, something like that. So when I was probably about five or six, I noticed my cousins, I had, I almost hung out with only males. All my cousins at the time were male and I had an older brother. I noticed they could just pee in the yard anytime. <laughs> so I went up to my parents and I was like, hey, 
I want a wiener. When can I get a wiener? <laughs> and it wasn't because I wanted to be a boy. It was because I wanted to pee standing up. And I thought you could just ask for one and get one. You're right. I didn't understand <laughs> from it on. Um, That's right. And that story is another reason why I thought I was trans as a teenager. Because I was like, oh, I remember saying this. There were mm -hmm. signs when I was young. Right. When it wasn't because I was trans. It's just because I didn't fully understand the world around me. Right. And then after my breasts started to, to develop, I didn't really like them. I don't think any girl likes them when they start to develop. Mm -hmm. We get negative attention that we don't want. And we just will do we'll cover up so we're not getting the attention. And that's yeah. something else that contributed. Yeah. I, again, it's, it's, it's another common thing I've, ex, I, I've, I've seen when listening to this sport, these stories where women, when they first started going through like puberty, like, you know, and developing mm -hmm. breasts, they're getting a negative tension, especially from like yeah. older, older men too. And yes. that, that is something that's like, well, it's it's an awkward age, right? It's 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 yeah. it's a time where it's just and obviously these these young you know females don't want that, and I and I think rightly, right? Like, uh, yeah. no, no one wants to be sexualized at a at a young age, and yeah. um, no, that that seems like I said, it just seems to be a common thread that I've I've seen. Um, one thing that I've thought about, even to my own, being young, like puberty is kind of a weird time, right? You're you're it is. you're awkward. Who likes their body around 10 to 12? Yeah. Um, and so it seems like the trans movement has picked up on that time period specifically for kids because yeah. no one likes their body at that young age. I yeah. mean, one can make an argument. Do we ever like our bodies? No one has this perfect physical physique that yeah. they're just in love with. Probably most people say, I would change this about myself. And so it seems that like that's a big like time to target children. You, you talked yeah. about targeting and some people have identified this as what grooming, um, grooming yeah. children uh, in this time where they don't like their bodies. What, do you have, do you have anything to say about that? I 100% believe that they definitely target children who are going through puberty because no one likes their body, especially during puberty. You have to learn to love your body and part about growing up, is learning to love your body. Yeah, definitely being being comfortable with with it, you know. Um, yeah, I, I just think the psychological aspect of this is is huge because I maybe maybe you like to speak to this because I think there are like stereotypes that we've put on yeah. people that also maybe aren't helpful, right? If you have short hair, you're you're a boy. Uh, maybe if you're a bit stronger, right? Yeah, that's identifying yeah. as because there there are females who maybe have what we would label as uh, male stereotypes. They may have a deeper yeah. voice, uh, and I, I think also pushing all this a lot of trans movement stuff could also uh, cause them psychological uh, trauma as well. Would Would you agree yeah. with that? I agree with that, and especially girls who grow up with PCOS polycystic ovary syndrome because mm. we I, I have pcos could you explain that it if you don't it mind sits yeah. on your ovaries and mm. it messes with your hormones some women grow mustaches and beards because of it mm. that i didn't get that but i did get the really thick leg and arm hair and that's something else i was self-conscious about when i started growing hair just because no girl wants to have hair I like right. some some girls do but right. growing up we want to be like everyone else we want to fit in and having a five o'clock shadow on your leg <laughs> in gym class was not something that was desired we'd get right. make fun of them. yeah you you brought up something interesting in a in an interview that I was listening to and that's this issue of anime in relation to this, uh, would you would you mind explaining that? I, I don't know if that was just um, off the cuff, or, but <laughs> I, just, I just thought it was interesting because, you know, you're the second yeah. person I've heard that from that. It was almost like anime was a gateway to the their transition. I, I don't really see it as a gateway. I do find it odd that so many trans people are obsessed with anime. Mm -hmm. And I think it's something about liking anime makes you an outcast. Mm. 
at least it used to. It, it's cool now to like anime, apparently. <laughs> like, my cousin is super popular at school, and she does all these amazing cosplays. That's funny. It's like, I would do that at school and get made fun of. <laughs> anime wasn't, or at least it wasn't publicly popular when I was in high yeah. school. And so, like, generally the, the kids who weren't as popular liked anime. Yeah. So, Something I think that's... Something about being unpopular makes you lean towards anime or the other way around. I don't know, but they target social outcasts and mm. social outcasts are the main people who watch anime. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, were, were there like other forms or, or, or were there forms of uh, maybe things on the internet when you started to transition that you started to look into and communicate with other people about? I joined a bunch of these trans Facebook groups. Hmm. My mom limited my internet access hmm. and I'm I'm really grateful for her doing that. Man. But I would still find ways around it. So I joined these Facebook groups because Facebook seems so innocent, you know. Mm-hmm. But all these trans Facebook groups and they're like, Yeah, you sound trans when I would ask all these questions like, Hey, I like boy things, I like having short hair. I don't like my body. I might be trans. I've been thinking about it after watching I Am Jazz. Can I have y'all's opinion? And that's when it started. They were just like, yeah, you're trans. You need to start medically transitioning, Mm. which so grateful I couldn't. Yeah. Um, And then I also joined the app iFunny, which is really weird because no one would expect there to be a trans community in a, a meme app. But I followed all these trans people on there who were around 20, 24, and then a few of them were in their 40s. But I, someone on that app sent me a binder. Wow. Yeah, which at the time I was really grateful for. I was like, oh, yay, binder. My mom wouldn't buy me one, so I'm glad to have one. But now as an adult, I'm just taken aback that an adult would buy a child's underwear. Yeah. So that's what it is, underwear. It's it's actually much worse than underwear because it's harmful and constricts you. Yeah. Which can... that's another that's another misinformation is that binders are harmless when worn correctly. Right. No, even when they're worn correctly, it can cause cracked ribs. It causes mm. permanent breast tissue damage when worn long term. And it, it's it's not harmless. And most teenagers wearing binders, they're not gonna wear it correctly yeah they're gonna wear it for longer hours than they're supposed to they're gonna wear it during pe i know i did and it's just it's it's not okay right yeah and you know target was what just selling it not too long ago yeah and and promoting this um so so you you grew up so you grew up having a lot of these uh social anxieties these like kind of being a loner and started to transition what was what was the moment like for like when you started to realize maybe this just isn't a good idea like was there a key moment or were there multiple moments what what was like like for you so it started right around graduation Hmm. right before graduation i was like oh i kind of want to dress up for my graduation as a girl i was forced to wear a dress a dress for it anyways so and i was like oh i kind of like wearing this dress and i got my nails done And then after graduation, none of my friends talked to me anymore. Hmm. None of them cared about me. I think they were only friends with me because I gave them that protection from being bullied. Hmm. And realizing that, I was just like, maybe I'm not really trans. I'm starting to enjoy being a woman now. I'm Hmm. coming to terms with my body. I'm starting to like my body more. Just learning to love yourself does so much. Yeah, so so it's kind of so kind of just getting more into your femininity kind of helped you to yeah. embrace your you being feminine. <laughs> yeah, and I realized I don't have to be super girly all the time in yeah. order to be a woman. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. Um what was it like when you started to detransition? Like what was some of the um comments you would get from friends, family, people online. What, what was that like for you? On the online trans community, I was pressured into continuing my transition. I was 18, so I could seek hormones if I wanted to. 
Thankfully, I couldn't afford them at the time. Mm. Uh, I was pressured to continue transitioning. And my family, my family was very happy that I stopped transitioning because they, they knew it wasn't me. Right. They would, my mom has told me that she would have supported me if she thought that's who I was, mm. but she knew that wasn't who I was. So she continued to use my real name, continued to use she, her pronouns, which I am so grateful for today. But the trans community completely outcasted me. They just, they saw me as evil now that I wasn't trans. Right. They were convinced that I wanted trans people to die. Right. It's like, if by detransitioning, I'm doing what's best for myself. I'm not saying I want anyone else to die. All right. They, they always go to these extremes. Mm -hmm. Anyone who's not 100% for them is against them. Yeah, that's 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 interesting. Did you ever get or do you still get uh, comments that saying that you are not a real transitioner? That you are not yes. real trans? Because I've seen All that a lot. I see that seems to be a lot common to people like who yeah. are not willing to uh, remain in their kind of what I call like delusion of grandeur or delusion or, or being fed into uh, the pressures of remaining trans when they know they're not, um, they get I called get not really trans. Yeah. I, I get those comments all the time, mm -hmm. which is weird because when I first started transitioning, I would get people say, Oh, if you're questioning your gender, that means you're not cis. So I'm like, okay, if I'm questioning, that means I am trans. But then the second you're not trans anymore, they <laughs> say you're not actually trans. That's funny. It, it, there's, it's so hypocritical. Yeah, that it's funny. I, I don't know how much you keep up with like politics or kind of like woke stuff, but I've, I've experienced this. Like whenever you push against like common black thought, they say, well, you're not really black, yeah. you know? So I, yeah. it, it seems to be a very similar line of thinking where it's like, well, if you if you're not continuing like this, then you're not really you're not one of us, you know. If you don't yeah. <laughs> stay the course, so to speak, <laughs> um, it's hard to have independent thought in communities nowadays. Because if you have one thought that's slightly different, they shame you and kick yeah. you out, and it shouldn't be that way. We should be able to have different thoughts and be able to have a debate and still be friends, still be part of the same community. And it's just one of my fears is that my job is going to find my Twitter and fire me because mm. they're very leftist. Mm. But at the same time, I do my job for fun. I'm not at my job because I need money. I just I'm there for fun. So if they fire me, so be it. I yeah. can find better things to do. That's awesome. Yep. And I I understand the privilege of being able to say that because I feel like a lot of people don't speak out because they'll lose their job and if they lose their job they'll lose everything in the in that sad we're like in a society to where you you can't formulate your own views or yeah you'll get fired yeah. from a job that has nothing to do with this topic right like yeah. you 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 could be a i don't know a, a bagger at walmart and if they yeah. <laughs> don't like your views they'll 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 cancel you right so to speak or fire yeah. you yeah i am um... I work at a doggy daycare, so I just, I watch dogs all day. I barely see any other humans, but I still know that there's a chance I could get fired if my coworkers see my Twitter. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, and that, well, yeah, that, it's messed up. That shouldn't be happening. Yeah. Hopefully they won't see it, <laughs> but, uh, if they do, they do. Yeah. No, I, I understand. Cause I, I'm in a similar position with, with, with what I do. And so I, I, t I totally understand that, but, um, a question I have for you, because I've seen this, especially from, um, well, from both sides, from men trying to be female and female trying to be men. I remember watching a uh, discussion where a female talks about her trying to transition as a man, and she felt like it was constantly difficult because she was trying yeah. to play the persona of a male, right? To the point where mm -hmm. she was conscientious about how she stood, how she yeah. walked, could could you explain that aspect of it? I went through the same thing when I was socially transitioning as a child. I constantly watched how I talked, how I walked, how I would stand. Because it, it's natural for women to walk differently than men. Absolutely. 
And even just hearing footsteps nine times out of 10, you're <laughs> able to tell the difference between a man and a woman. Yeah. There's always those exceptions. Right. But there's just, there's so many tiny details that most people don't realize the differences between men and women. Women kind of, we sway our hips more and we walk lighter than men mm -hmm. and we, we just move differently. Mm -hmm. And trying to move like a man and stand like a man and talk like a man takes so much mental energy. Yeah. Yeah, that's what uh, she was saying, that it, it was draining to the point of yeah. like, you would just, you didn't want to hang around people because you would yeah. have to put on this persona for hours that you knew you were unable to really uh, do for long periods of time. Um, was, yeah. there, was there any like, like one part like you would see was that was very difficult to, to being a man um, that you found like, wow, this is. This is this is hard. This is draining on me personally. Was I, I would think like for me it would be like speaking, like yes, like that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, see, <laughs> there's that one point where I just stopped trying to make my voice lower, hmm. and I would try and be more monotone still. Just something about being monotone made it to where I sounded more manly. Yeah, and. It was just, it was draining. Mm -hmm. Like, like she said, it was, it was draining because it's, it's not natural right. to move like that or talk like that, especially uh, walking. I probably had the most difficult time trying to walk as a man hmm. just because it, it's, it's not natural <laughs> and my hips don't like to move that way. Right. No, I could, I could totally see that. Um, so with this kind of there's also been like this push in media about trans and sports. Um, what's, mm -hmm. what's your, what's your view about maybe not even just in sports, but like men who transition as female kind of taking roles of, of women. What, what would be your views on that now? I don't think it's okay. Men have denser bones, bigger lungs and bigger hearts. Mm -hmm. And they have more muscle than women. Right. Women have a thin layer of fat over their entire body. Men don't have that. They feel different. They walk different. They play different. I don't think men understand. I don't think women. I don't think women understand just how much more strength the average man has over the average female. Mm -hmm. Take a man my height who exercises just as much as I do, and he's going to be much stronger than me. Yeah. And it's, it's not okay for them to take over sports, oh, cause, especially in high schools, because sports, winning in sports will get you scholarships. Mm -hmm. So these are men taking away opportunities and scholarships from women. It's not okay. Same with the beauty pageant. The, the, the beauty pageant that happened a few yeah, days ago. I saw uh, that. Miss Beery. Yeah. And if a woman showed up to that pageant looking like him, she would have been laughed at. She wouldn't have even made it on stage. Yeah. Because in beauty pageants, you have to put effort in how you look. You have to put effort in how you act. Everything. You have to be smart. You have to be well-spoken. Not saying that he's not. I didn't listen to him, so he might be well-spoken. But it is obvious that he did not put effort into how he looked. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it was pretty uh, bad. It was pretty bad. Yeah. Um, we're we're in this weird like deconstruction culture to where I think we're in this blend yeah. of things now to where I remember just a few years ago the the mantra was women women right just pushing yeah. women women and everything and now it's very weird to where you can have a man become a woman and he would be eligible for those same rights. Just, just, yeah. It's what what's your thoughts on that? I don't think males should be allowed in female spaces. I'm not sure that's exactly what you were asking, but yeah, that's... I I don't think they should be allowed in female spaces, such as dressing rooms, bathrooms, prisons. There's a reason why it's segregated. Right. Because most violent crimes, especially most violent sexual crimes against women are done by males. Right. And saying you're female does not change the fact that you're male. Right. Especially Absolutely. since there's been a lot of cases of 
people identifying as trans to get into locker rooms, into dressing rooms, just to peep on women and children. Right. And that's not okay. It's opening the door to something evil. Oh, I, I think that's a good description of what this actually yeah. is. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you used that word, evil, because mm-hmm. it's just not like mistaken innocence. Yeah. You know, it's... it's yeah. It's opening the door for women and girls to be exploited that's right and that is just not okay it's that's, evil that's right you know i couldn't imagine you know training for an event for all my life right and being mm. and being you know maybe slightly above average for as a female to where you know maybe you would get like third place mm-hmm. at an event you know think of like yeah. track you know you're, you're you're an okay runner but you know you get yeah. third and this man comes along and that bumps you now to fourth to where yeah. you're, you're on the cusp of being great to from good yeah. to great. Now, now you can't even, you know, like you said, it takes away scholarships. Yeah. And I don't think many people have thought about this issue, you know, like this is actually taken yeah. away from real women. It is. And it's a teenage girl can train her entire life to make first place in her track meet. And then a teenage boy who has barely even trained can make it first just because he has biological advantages. Yeah. And that's not okay. Yeah. They're taking away opportunities and scholarships from women. I, uh, because of all this, it caused me to go look. So I ran track in high school and I I looked back at my time and what it would be like in the year I ran. So I ran the 400, and mm-hmm. I ran it in 50 seconds. Not impressive. It was okay. You know, yeah. I'm not bragging about it. But that time would have gotten me like third. Or put. Mm-hmm. I would have definitely been invited for an Olympic for with females. And I'm like, yeah. s- some average guy in track would already be. And so, like you said, it just shows the the unfair competitive nature. Where 50, that wouldn't have. That, that would give me nowhere yeah. close to com- competing in, you know, the Olympics for males. And so it's almost, you know, I think of uh, Leah Thompson, this Tom, Thomas, right? The yeah. swimmer who as a, as a guy, very subpar, you know, but as a yeah. female is like destroying world records. Yeah. <laughs> and so, I mean, I, I just sympathize with, with, with women, not just in sports. Right. I mean, at the end of the day, it's something minuscule, right? Sports, but just the, just the fact that it's, it's, something someone has trained for and you know and it's it's, yeah. it's just uh, it's just unfair you know it's just totally it really unfair. Is. and um you brought this up earlier just about kids to where mm. man they're, they're they're i've been seeing kids as young as five really being fed yeah. hormonal drugs and um you know yeah just just could you speak to like the negative effects of of even though you didn't get that, like how, how, how that could affect a children negatively, um, trying to, uh, transition. So something I have experienced is being on birth control. I had to be on birth control for other medical issues that I have. And it was warned that I cannot be on this medicine long-term because the hormones cause, cause a higher risk of osteoporosis and Mm. cancer. They are giving these same hormones to children to take long term. Wow. If it's causing a woman's body who is meant to take these hormones osteoporosis and cancer, then what do you think it's going to do to a male body who is not meant to take these hormones? Right. It it's just it's not okay. Children cannot consent to puberty blockers, hormones, or surgeries because they can't understand the lifelong effects of it yet the lifelong infertil- infertility that yeah. it can cause. And maybe you would agree with this. Uh, I'm curious on your thoughts, but I, I think we're only seeing the beginning of the health risks because this is really a, a, a new phenomenon in one sense because I remember when I was in high school, nobody was trying to be trans. It was only, yeah, you know, you're gay. That was really the only thing. Or, or at best, I remember like there was like one or two guys who – very, super effeminate but they weren't trying yeah. to actually get any surgeries they weren't trying yeah. to do anything like that so like and that was just you know let's see about 14 years ago uh mm-hmm. i was i graduated high school 
And so in only 14 years, we've seen this span of where yeah. very few people were doing to now is an explosion. Even for me, I graduated in 2017 and mm. there was only a handful of trans people. Wow. Looking, looking back at my former classmates that looked on their Facebooks, most of them nowadays identify as gender fluid, gender queer, trans, all that jazz. Yeah. And it, it has exploded. And I believe we're just seeing the beginning effects of it. Doctors know the effects of women taking steroids. They know the long-term effects for that. But for some reason, when it's disguised as transitioning, they deny those long-term effects. Yeah. Um, wh why, why do you think there's been such an explosion for especially young kids, uh, high school age kids, uh, to where now, like you said, even what, just, just five years ago, it's like very few yeah. people were identifying. Now it's like, it's almost like 50% of people have maybe yeah. some kind of identity in this. It gives them a community. Mm. It makes people feel special. Mm. And I think doctors are pushing it because mm it makes them a lifetime of money. If you get them started young, mm. they're going to stay on these hormones their entire lives. They'll get surgeries. They will continue feeding money into it. Wow. Yeah, so kind of on that aspect of, you, you brought up like doctors kind of wanting to, uh, it's a it's a cash cow, so to speak. And, I, and I've heard that exact same language from other detransitioners that yeah. they were pretty much a, a project to, you know, feed the mouths of this doctor. But because um, I, re I recently saw a TikTok where a person went into the, you know, speak to, to the doctor to get hormonal medication or, or drugs. And they were given it just because they said they were trans. No questions asked. Yeah. But they went into another one and it was like they tried to get the same hormonal stuff for something else and they were denied it. Yeah. And it's that um, I just made a tweet about this, which I was not expecting to get popular at all. <laughs> um, it went viral. So I had to have my uterus taken out for medical issues back in July. And my doctor is very nervous about having me start hormones for menopause hmm. because he knows the long-term effects for those. He knows if I stay on it for more than 10 years, I might have these adverse side effects such as osteoporosis and cancer being the main two. But then I went and saw, went, not went and saw, went on folkshealthcare.com to see how easy it is to get hormones on their website. I pretended to be female to male trans. Hmm. With after a 15 minute test, I got approved to have hormones shipped to my door. Wow. So medically needing hormones for menopause, I have to jump through all these hoops so that they make sure it's the right path for me. I appreciate that. I'm glad they're taking these precautions. Mm -hmm. And then on the flip side, getting HRT for being trans is a 15 minute test online. That is ridiculous. You don't even have to see a doctor in person to get these hormones. Yeah. You know, I, I, I've talked about how this and, and you're mentioning how it's being pushed. It's, it's being pushed by yeah. the doctors. It's being pushed. I mean, TikTok is like a a haven for if you're trans yeah. but not only tiktok but like um disney netflix uh yes. it, it's 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 all like you can't you can't escape it and it's it's been my kind of persuasion like if parents have children one they need to inform themselves of this because their child if their child comes yeah. to them like hey i want to get a surgery i want to be a girl you need to be able to walk them down like yeah. why that's not okay uh, yeah. would, you, would you agree with that? I agree with that. I believe the main issue with kids transitioning is parents not fully understanding what's going on because of all the misinformation around it. I totally agree. Uh, that, that seems to be a, a, a common story as well as yeah. the parents are, it, it, it almost seems like the parents are like just so wanting to see their child, the child happy, which is understandable from a parental standpoint, but they're yeah. they're uninformed on what's actually happening, right? They haven't done the research themselves. Yeah. Especially when all this big media is telling you that it's okay and that there's no long-term side effects. Right. 
when media is telling you it's completely reversible, right. you're going to believe that because that is what's being pushed so heavily right now. Yeah. Even when you try and research it on your own, the first suggestions that pop up are paid advertisements that tell you that it's harmless. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it wasn't just kind of like it's it's you have to really dive deep to get the truth and like yeah. here's here's stories like yours that's what that's why I want to give a platform for you know people like you and and others to share their story because you have to dig very deep to hear detransition stories to hear accurate yeah. medical information on how it was dangerous uh was that how it was for you when you started kind of seeing some of this stuff yes and even just wording uh, the long-term effects of male to female HRT, you won't get clear answers. You mm. have to look up long-term effects of a female taking steroids. Mm. If, you, if you search that, that's the only way to get actual results that aren't all, what's the word? That haven't been bought by the different. algorithms. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like so many... Of these websites are showing a sugar-coated version saying none of this bad stuff is going to happen that's been disproven when in reality it hasn't been disproven it's mm. still happening to women women on a woman on testosterone are still going to get osteoporosis and cancer not guaranteed but a much higher risk yeah wow have have there been people that have kind of um come to you saying they're struggling with this that you uh that they're really kind of just seek help because they they've heard of your story or something like that have you have you experienced that i've had a lot of parents come to me wow. and ask me for advice about their child i say a lot a handful mm -hmm. probably about three or five parents come to me and tell me hey my daughter's going through this right now is there any advice that you can give me and it's it's difficult for me to give advice because I knew when I was in their shoes, the child's shoes, I would not listen to anything, not listen to anything my parents said, because I believed that if they were against me the slightest bit, that meant that they wanted me dead and wow. they weren't against me. They were just trying to do what was best for me. Yeah. It's almost this like brainwashing that happens, right? That yeah. like, as good as you knew your parents were as, as you, you, yeah. you in hindsight now, like, man, my parents were awesome. You know, they were great people. Yeah. It's this other thing that you wanted was telling you, no, they're, they're evil. They're, they're, yeah. they, they want you dead. It, isn't that amazing how that, that works, huh? It is. And that what really solidifies for me let me reword that. That really proves to me that it's grooming. Hmm. Telling, a, telling a child that the people who love them actually hate them, that is textbook grooming, is taking a child away from their protectors. Yeah. You see that a lot like in uh, re relationships too. Well, yeah. you know, if you don't do this for me, you don't really love me. Or yeah. it's it's like borderline cultish in one sense uh, to, to, oh, to do that. Um, which I've seen people say that as well. Um, so your your experience now that you've detransitioned, uh, how how let me ask this: How do you feel now as a as a woman, as a confident woman, in, you know, identifying it and believing and knowing more importantly that you are one? It's taken a long time to love myself, but I truly love myself and my body. Mm -hmm. And I know that if I start hating my body, there's things I can do to love myself again. I can. I'm always working to better myself. I'm always working to make myself healthier. And I come short on a lot of those things. I need to cook at home more often, <laughs> but I'm still putting in the effort to be better. And by doing so, that just makes me love myself more. Yeah. Well, like I said, I, I appreciate you uh, sharing your story, but yeah. what, 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 man, you know, uh, one of the things that got me interested was hearing people's story, hearing kind of what they went through. And I, I don't know why. I, I don't know why. Maybe it was maybe it's something that I've experienced in my life that just I resonated with. And I, it wasn't a feel sorry for in the like, 
oh look yeah. how low are you it was more just man i just empathize like man just just right that human compassion that i think yeah. kind of social media takes out of us right <laughs> to just yeah. not really be compassionate with people and i think that's maybe more of what we need to win people that are going through these struggles uh, would you agree with that I agree. I think social media has really warped people. We can say whatever we want online and not have any consequences. You're right. In real life, if you went up to someone and was like, you want me dead. I know you want me dead. They would just look at you <sighs> like you're crazy. Right. But social media has given so many people a voice who mm. shouldn't have that much power. Right. I'm all for freedom of speech. But being on your phone all the time and telling, bullying people into being trans, grooming people into being trans, that is not okay. And we need more safeguarding. Yeah. You... I, I always encourage parents to watch what your kids are doing online, limit their access. That's the number one thing I tell parents who come to me who are trying to understand their daughter being tra trans. It's like just... Once you limit that online access and limit them from speaking to their groomers, they're going to come to reality. Yeah. Uh, how would you respond to the person that says, well, you're just you're just actually telling the parent to just be overbearing and overprotective and just to control their kid. How, how would you respond to that? <laughs> that people say, like I've been I've been told that recently that, oh, I just that's abuse to not let your kids online is abuse which is something I saw in the trans community a lot. People would be like, oh, if your parents are trying to limit your access to us, that means they're being abusive. They don't want you to have access to your friends. They're trying, they're trying to separate you from the people who care about you. That is not true. In some cases it is, but in most cases it's not. Your parents are just trying to protect you from the people who are grooming you. Mm -hmm. But when you're so far down into that rabbit hole, you don't see that. You see it as abuse. Right. But I'm so grateful my mom tried to limit my access. Yeah. I found some ways around it, but mm -hmm. I'm glad she tried her best to limit my access. Yeah. I think uh, many people who are coming from that perspective, uh, maybe more of a left perspective or a liberal perspective when it comes to these issues, um, they've mastered something that I wish conservatives wouldn't fight back against, and that's the... Mm -hmm. uh, the master of language. Language is a powerful tool, right? And just like right now, right, we're talking about how if, if parents are, you know, actually caring and controlling their kids' internet use, then the left will say, well, that's abuse. And, and yeah. but nobody wants to be called abusive. So the, the, yeah, the reaction is, well, to stop what they're saying yeah. is calling me abusive rather than actually, no, I'm not being abusive and, and intellectually explaining why. Yeah. You know, and so, I, I wish more people would actually fight against things like that. Like some people will call, I, like right now the popular thing is like call someone a racist and that shuts down all conversation, mm -hmm. you know? And so yeah. I, I, I encourage people to like, man, like don't just take that, like fight back against it or they will win. Yeah. I got harassed online for a week back in 2019 because I was called a racist. So I'm, <laughs> I'm Jewish. My hair is naturally very, very curly. Yeah. I've straightened it today and it's very damaged, but my hair was like, like it, like it was an Afro. It was really short. It was an Afro, super curly. It was a Jufro, you know? Yeah. I called it a Jufro online <laughs> and got called racist, got harassed for a week. People commenting on all my public posts, just calling me a racist. People messaging my mother being like, wow. you should be ashamed. You raised a racist. And it's like, <laughs> well, literally, all I did is call my hair a Jufro. I am ethnically Jewish. I can say that. <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, that's insane. D did you, did yeah. you, is there a lot of bullying inside of the trans community? Not just to mm -hmm. outsiders, but to insiders. Do, do you think there is? Yes. If you say one thing against them, they all team up on you and make sure you never say that again or never think that way again. Yeah. Man, that's that's crazy. I mean, that should show some of the yeah. I, I'm very so I'm very big on like when people don't have an argument, watch what they do, right? Like Yes. The like just call I you have, a racist or whatever. Yeah, 
Yeah. And something I like to do is I don't block anyone on Twitter. It is very, very rare that I block someone. I like to let them speak because I like to show other people just how unhinged they are. Right. I'll say one thing in return, like maybe two sentences, and then get three paragraphs <laughs> back. And it's like, dude, <laughs> like chill. I sent right. you one thing. You don't need to send me an entire book back. Right. And it's unhinged writing, repeating themselves a million times, which I repeat myself a lot, but just when you're writing it down, how do you not reread what you wrote and be like, <laughs> hey, maybe I should dial it back a bit? Anger they causes. Take a civil, yeah, they take a civil or words, sorry. <laughs> they take a civil conversation and debate and just go completely unhinged because they're convinced that you want them dead. Yeah. It's like, I don't want you dead. I just don't think children should have access to irreversible hormones and surgeries. But it's, you know, we're in this big movement of choice, but it's very interesting when, you know, when you decide it to be quote unquote trans, as if you can transition your gender anyway, um, you were, you were viewed as something great, right? Something likable, yeah. popular now. Oh, you're, you're, something you're untouchable. Yeah. You're embracing your true self. But then when you made the choice to say, well, I'm actually not that, then you were bullied and condemned. Yeah. It's, it doesn't make any sense. Like They're taking away the choice. They they make it seem like you have all these choices when really they're taking away your choice. Yeah. Uh, I, may, uh, I would like to hear your thoughts on this too, but I've actually seen the trans movement be the most bigoted to actual women. Yes, like if I hundred percent agree with that. Like women who speak out against this, mm -hmm. they're actually deemed less than a man who's trying to become yeah. a woman. It's like it. I'm like I, a lot of times I'm I'm very like analytical and ob I observe mm -hmm. a lot before I say stuff a yeah. lot, and I I just look back and see this stuff and I'm just like, it makes no sense. It's like we're in the upside down world. Like, yeah, left is right, right is left. You know, um, I agree. And so I always tell people like, man, if you really care about women, then you should not be for trans. Yeah. Um, they're just, they're making a character of woman. That's right. Like, like Dylan Mulvaney, oh, right? Um, oh my God. Oh. <laughs> he's very, yeah. I think, <laughs> condescending to women. Um, so condescending. And there, it's disrespectful. I yes. I don't understand how people truly believe that he's being honest. I know that seven years ago, I would have believed he was being honest, but I look at it now with my today brain and I'm just like, how on earth are people so delusional that they think he's being genuine? Yeah. I mean, but, but it's really sad, right? Because this, it, it kind of just shows you where we're at as a culture to where this guy in 200 days was able to try to become a right transition yeah. as a woman and, and he gets to sit in front of with the president yeah. for, for that, not, not for actually accomplishing something, right. Which would be understandable why he would be in front of the president. Um, but for, for, you didn't accomplish anything like you, yeah. you can't you're do what you're just making fun of woman. <laughs> and you get to meet the president because you're making fun of woman. That's not okay. Yeah. And so we're not a character. We're not a feeling. Men are allowed to wear dresses. That doesn't make them a woman. And it just, society went so fast from men can wear whatever they want to, oh, if men wear this, that means they're actually a woman. Yeah. Um, I posted something like that the other day, um, you know, because, you know, blackface was a very, like, condemned mm -hmm. thing, right? Like, a white yeah. person trying to be, you know, think they're a, a, a black person, by, or by putting on makeup. Yeah black on blackness on your face you're somehow black or you know yeah. it's was, it was all but i i said something to the point of if we're going to condemn blackface then we have to logically con condemn woman face yeah you know it's putting like you said putting on a dress does not make you female like exactly i mean i I got a weak ban on Reddit from a similar conversation because <laughs> um, someone was someone was saying you can transition, men can transition to female. So I commented, okay, so this means that a white person can transition to a black person, and they're like, no, because they haven't, they weren't raised as a black person, 
they never experienced the same oppression as black people. <laughs> so I replied back, okay, so that means you can't transition from male to female because males have not experienced the oppression females have experienced. And they went off saying it wasn't the same thing. <laughs> I'm like, how every argument they made could be made the same way back. Exactly. And they just didn't see the hypocrisy of it. Matter of fact, I think it would be more easier to transition ethnicity than it would yeah. be gender or, you know, sex. It, I mean, if I was just to get my, because <laughs> uh, you're, you being, your, your gender is actually more fundamental to who you are than you being black or white, yeah. you know? So maybe some people disagree with that, but that would be my position. But Emily, I appreciate you for coming on. Yeah. I, I know we talked yeah, briefly. I, I, yeah, I, I want to bring this up because, like I said, my podcast is a All mm. Things Theology. It's a Christian mm. podcast, and I know I kind of spoke to that briefly. And my hope is that one day that you would come to embrace Jesus Christ. Uh, I know you talked briefly about, you know, yeah. trying to go to church. I, if you don't want to bring I'm that up, that's... That. Yeah, I hope that you would. And like I said, if you have any questions about that, I hope hope that I could be someone you can come and come and ask about. But again, I, I do appreciate you for uh, coming on this podcast and, yeah, and thank telling you for your experience. Yeah.